2005, there was a small event which was going on in Indian Institute of Science, wherein uh, a representation from around 170 countries where the young students, like uh, he was also one of, it was, I was also very uh, young enough at that time, uh, even representation on one particular sector called sustainability. So uh, we attended the program, and it was one immersion program for everyone to try and understand uh, the ground reality of the, uh, you know, what's happening to the planet. And, and these 170 students were really working on, uh, in their own subjects, like, you know, there were a bunch of students working on uh, climate change or plastic recycling or wildlife conservation, marine life. So there were various projects, and every project was, you know, was self-sustained by itself without any government funding. It used to work by its own. That was the model which was really inspired about. And one which was uh, really inspired me a lot was on waste management initially. When I went back and tried to do s a small research on the current waste management practices in India, I found out there wasn't no, no, no models at all, you know, which weren't uh, uh, existed, wherein the collection, the transporting, processing, and uh, the circular economy was, the terminology wasn't existed at all. And slowly, you know, I met one wonderful woman who was continuously working for more than a decade in the same sector. Her name is Dr. Almitra Patel. She was fighting against the government in setting up certain processes, certain bylaws, that you know, the government has to follow when it comes to solid waste management. And she tried and identified various stakeholders in the system, it, which includes citizens' participation, and citizens' roles and responsibility on whether it is, how to segregate the waste. It's, it's citizens' responsibility in the first place. And segregated waste, and how the corporation has to follow in a structured way, in either into collecting waste from every door to door and transporting it to, uh, a nearest, uh, you know, the processing facilities and how exactly the processing facility has to be designed by itself. Uh, and these were the framework which uh, this woman was working on. And I met her, and I met her, uh, and I told her that, you know, I would like to work in this sector. And she said, w what are you up to? And uh, are you a student? That's the first question she asked. And I said, yes. Please don't get into this business. This is not your cup of tea. The main reason is there's waste inside and there's waste outside also. They are, it's, a, it's a garbage mafia, it's a garbage nexus. And one cannot enter into this and survive for longer run. My journey didn't stop. I was, I, I literally pestered a lot. It's like every weekend, whenever I used to get time, I used to go and meet her and ask her, no, I want to get into this, I want to do something out of it. And that one small connect which Dr. Almitra Patel gave me was, you know, there was, there were equally uh, passionate people, you know, who, who want to work and want to contribute in this sector. Uh, she connected me to two women, uh, Dr. Meenakshi Bharat and Vani Murthy. Then I met her, uh, I met both of them, and told her that, you know, we want to do something in this. We'll start off with Bangalore itself. Because as an overall, uh, India generates closely 1,43 metric tons of waste every single day. In that Bangalore alone generates closely 5,500 tons of waste every single day, and 80 to 90 percent waste is ending up in landfill unprocessed. And segregation percent is slowly increasing up to 15 to 20 percent now. And overall India's segregation percentage is less than 10 till today. In way back in 2012, and we started look looking for various options. You know, we went to uh, urban local bodies like Gram Panchayats, Village Panchayats, City Municipal Corporations to and try and understand the ground reality. And we also happened to meet uh, Velur Srinivasan. Uh, it's famously called as Velur Solid Waste Management Model. We tried to understand his, it, his model is fantastic, by the way. It's, it's, uh, it's a, one of the best sustainable waste manage, management models which can be easily replicable. And after understanding and it's, it's a very good learning for all of us. And we came back in 2011. That's when in 2011, November, we started piloting with a small 
nearby town from Bangalore, 70 kilometers away, a small town called Chintamani. Why we selected that place is because we had a limited population to understand the waste characteristics better and to set up a small pilots program like, you know, whether it's collection, whether it's transporting, whether it's, uh, you know, recycling or composting. It was very, we thought it's very easy for us to set up there. Actually, it didn't happen. So that one year pilot program, what we did, was huge learning for us. And we were very much confident that, you know, we would do something and we can, we can at least set up certain pilot programs and certain sustainable models which can run by itself, whether it's low cost, no cost basis. So we, we, we came back uh, to Bangalore and we had a, a you know, it's, I know it's how tough to work with governments normally. So we made sure that, you know, we somehow convinced government that this urban local body, BBMP out there. And there was an interesting policy also driven there by uh, even the Bangalore city is the first city to set up a decentralized driver's collection centers. And these driver's collection centers are like secondary storage mechanism wherein the source segregated uh, dry waste or wet waste, which is collected normally by the private outsourced contractor, uh, drops into the nearest driver's collection centers. From there, you know, the source segregated dry waste will undergo secondary tertiary level of segregating and this ends up, in, ends up for recycling. This is unusual. And this was something unique. And uh, before that, you know, much before BBMP tried and tested out to putting up a driver's collection center in all the wards of Bangalore, we did a small pilot by investing our, our, on, our, on our savings by, you know, we normally, uh, when we have a, a, a foolish idea, we go back and ask for funds. And uh, we go back and ask for two Fs, that is, you know, friends, fools, and family. Those are th three things we try and convince them somehow and get some money and try and test the various things. Half works and half doesn't work. It's fine. We can at least convince all three people. So we did the same. So we did a pilot and all these pilot programs and how to manage driver's collection center, how one can, uh, you know, after segregating the value addition, how it is possible, we tried and documented everything. Then we signed up an MOA with BBMP to handle 11 watts of Bangalore to go zero waste. It's all, again, when, uh, when we started piloting in rural community, things were different. Where, uh, when we started, when we, were, we were very much boosted with confidence when we, uh, you know, started working in urban city like Bangalore. Practically, we'd had uh, many more challenges what we faced initially uh, 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 working in rural uh, Bangalore. So in Bangalore, back again, whatever models what you have tested, we were at around 100 kilometers miles per hour speed. We cut down our speed to 20 to 30. We sat back in our drawing room to try and understand, and we started tweaking and customizing our own models, what we have tried and tested for six, seven years. So we did it. And uh, finally, uh, in the 11 driver's collection center, so we, it's like, you know, wherever, wherever we used to go, we start off with awareness programs and how to segregate the waste. Uh, one has to segregate waste as per, now, now we have policy. So, you know, we have solid waste management rules 2000, uh, then 2016. Now we have every set standards and policy set and uh, even Supreme Court directs us everyone to segregate waste into three grades, that is dry, wet and household hazardous or sanitary waste. Uh, when we started giving awareness the to the community and for schools or institutions and wherever we used to go, we used to tell them to segregate the waste. The next question was what next? I segregate the waste, I give it to you in a segregated way. But the person who collects waste will, again, put it up in, uh, in one bin or else, you know, it just puts it back in the auto rickshaw and it goes in a mixed way. Then we thought of, you know, like after setting up a collection center, we, we told them that, you know, see, whatever dry waste you have segregated at place, it is coming to the driver's collection center. We are segregating it to various grades. There will be many recyclables or non-recyclables back again. Recyclables, we do recycling. Non-recyclables, we hand it in a complied way. It's all responsibility. You please segregate. And this is the motivation wherever we go, we used to tell them and request them to do that. After collecting, after transporting, after aggregating the waste, what next is a question. So uh, again, we went back and started doing small research to understand the complied and responsible recycling happening. I mean, uh, 
we tried and checked out. I mean, there were hardly around 15 to 16 people in entire Karnataka who were really authorized to process plastic waste. So again, we went, went back to government, we, tell the, we told them that, you know, we would like to set up a dry waste processing center, which will be Karnataka's first public-private partnerships dry waste processing center, which will run in a complied way, and this can be a replicable, and it, 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 we don't need any funding, because the main reason we, we said no to funding is, there are many village panchayats, or taluk panchayats, who are not very close to, uh, Bangalore city or any, any urban capital who are, uh, one can easily attract funds either through corporate social responsibility or it can be a government expenditure. They try and test and trial, do some trial and error basis. There are many few, there are many villages, you know, they don't have enough funds to manage the waste. We told them, you know, we want to sustain the entire pro uh, process on our own. We took that as a challenge and the project cost was closely around 50 to 60 lakhs. We thought of, you know, again, raising funds for that. Uh, it happened that, you know, we met one of the inspiration people who are willing to spend their own savings and, and they valued our interest. Uh, I would like to mention two names which were, they were, uh, we are very much, you know, um, fortunate to have to meet them. One is Dr. Mohandas Pai of uh, Infosys and V. Balakrishna and uh, Dr. Revati, and then uh, Kiran Majumdar Shah of Biocon. They trusted us, they invested around 20 lakhs at the initial stage to set up a driver's processing center. In that, you know, we used to do recycling of plastic waste, because 60% is plastic waste in driver's stream. We, did a pla we set up a plastic recycling unit, we made it into granules, that is raw material for next level of finished product unit. So we didn't stop at that level. So there was huge market fluctuation, whether it's selling and non-selling. There's a there's lot of intricacies and practical difficulties. So we thought of, why not build a product or develop a product which is really useful for the society? And we thought of, you know, after uh, the farming community was very much closer to us, and we said, you know, we will develop a product. Let's develop an agriculture pipes made out of waste plastic which is of better quality and which is much lesser than the government subsidized price. And we started producing agriculture pipes made out of waste plastic of uh, less than 3.2 uh, rupees per meter. We developed a product. And we started producing it and giving it to agriculture, uh, you know, cooperative unions, uh, the regular dealers. And in the last two years, I think we would have produced more than 5 lakh to 10 lakh metric I mean, five to 10 lakh meters of pipes are have distributed to farmers at much subsidized price. And these are the, I mean, one after the other. And when it comes to wet waste management, we thought of, you know, there was an interesting story what we went back and tried to understand that. In 2000, much before 2000 and 1995, there were farmers who used to come with their own vehicles or, uh, and they used to come to Bangalore and they used to collect wet waste, the source segregated wet waste, free from any, any of the, uh, uh, you know, plastics, anything. They should take it and they should do composting there. And that, 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 that was a beautiful thing what we, because there were corporations who are struggling every single day to, to find place for dumping. Normally they find places either in abandoned quarry or it's lake beds or empty plots. They were very happy dumping there. But again, it's a, it's a useful resource which a farmer needs it on a daily basis, that's manure. Where, we are fight, where farmer fights in every year, the scarcity of manure, the scarcity of farm equipments for him. This, what we thought, you know, we, we tried out with farmers, just like Uber model, we tried out by aggregating farmer in the periphery of Bangalore, and we told them that, you know, we will collect a source segregated organics for you in the way, as a raw material, we'll do a community composting, and we'll incentivize farmer by paying him small amount of rent for the land utilization, and the harvested manure belongs to you. That was like really interesting, and it's it's we we want we just tried to bridge that old uh, you know the gap which normally they used to do it. Just that you know they didn't had any confidence in the government. We were uh, just acted as an agents between government and the farming community, and to deliver the right kind of wet waste to his farm for composting. Uh, 
again, we tied out with Pilot by working with the government for Dasra Festival Waste. We aggregated close to 600 tons and started aggregating it, uh, started doing community composting in the farmland. That worked for us. And currently we are working with around 24 farmers in, across the periphery of Bangalore. And in Yalanka, there's one zone in uh, Bangalore. Wherein currently we're composting closely six to seven tons of waste and giving diversion close to 6,000 to 7,000 units put together. And uh, yes, this, uh, our intention and our motivation and what would like to, uh, you know, uh, inspire or contribute, I mean, we're just trying to welcome everyone that this huge set of innovation which is still lacking in this sector. We need a lot of people to come forward. It can be an academic or, or it can be a researchers or entrepreneurs. There's a huge set of opportunities lying in this sector and all our uh, technology or processes, what we have developed so far for a decade, what we have tried and tested out and uh, documented it, everything. So it's on, op it's, in, it's on open source. One can easily come, learn, develop. By this, you know, let's try and uh, build a clean, green and sustainable India. Thank you.